This is CNN 10. We are an objective explanation of news in 10 minutes, and I'm Carl Azus. Welcome to the show. A tornado and the effects of it lead things off for us today. We're taking you to Dallas, Texas. That's where daylight on Monday morning revealed the effects of the severe weather that struck on Sunday night. A cold front that's sweeping east across the United States spawned a tornado. We don't know yet how strong it was. Weather officials are still trying to figure that out. But its effects were felt all over the Dallas-Fort Worth area. More than 100,000 households and businesses had lost electricity at one point. The workers had restored it to half of them by midday Monday. Campuses were damaged, which led to classes being canceled at six schools on Monday. And at a Dallas fire station, high winds blew off most of its roof. Dallas Mayor Eric Johnson said that considering the fact that the storm raked across a densely populated part of the city, it's very fortunate that there were no lives lost and no serious injuries from the storm. He said it caused mostly property damage issues. Texas Governor Greg Abbott declared 16 counties disaster areas, which will provide state resources to help people recover. Dallas is in Tornado Alley, a central part of the United States that sees a relatively high number of tornadoes. And even though they're most common in the late spring and early summer, tornadoes can form at any time of year as this storm showed us. When severe weather strikes, one of the most common questions we get, what's the difference between a watch and a warning? Well, just for comparison's sake, let's take this stoplight. Green light, yellow light, red light. Sometimes the National Weather Service will issue a hazardous weather outlook, an advisory. Treat this as a green light. Know that the possibility of rough weather is there, but go about your day as you would. Just stay alert. But as conditions tend to ripen, we may see a tornado watch issued by the National Weather Service. Use this with more caution. This means conditions are favorable for tornado development, and so you need to know what you should do in case a tornado strikes. That's where the warning comes in. If the radar has indicated a tornado or someone has spotted a tornado in progress, that's when the tornado warning is issued and you should get to your safe place immediately, stop what you're doing and seek shelter. 10 second trivia. Tony Janus, an American born in 1889, was best known for his accomplishments in what? Aviation, track and field, railroad construction, or yachting? Tony Janus was an aviator, a barnstormer, and the pilot of the world's first commercial plane service. In 1914, that service was a 23-minute hop in a plane like this. It flew between St. Petersburg, Florida, and Tampa, Florida. Commercial aviation continues to develop, even today. The longest non-stop passenger flight in modern times looked like this. It was a 19 hour and 16 minute haul between New York City and Sydney, Australia that was completed over the weekend. It covered 10,066 miles before touching down. And for the 49 people on board, this was as much of an experiment as it was an achievement. Qantas, the biggest airline in Australia, was working with medical researchers to see how passengers and pilots are affected by long haul flights like this. Depending on their findings, Qantas may offer more regular flights like it in the months ahead. Up next today, thanks to what's known as the Internet of Things, everything from lamps and toasters to washing machines and refrigerators can be connected to the Internet and your smartphone. And critics say a lot of this isn't really useful or very smart. But this kind of technology is finding its way into wheelchairs that can climb stairs and canes that can give users advanced notice of obstacles. And that's an example of how everyday accessibility could dramatically change lives worldwide. We need all stakeholders in our society to make technology available to all. People with no disability, they cannot really imagine what that really means for people like me. There are 253 million visually impaired people in the world and these people have been still using just a plain stick. Cities can be difficult places to navigate at the best of times, but for some with disabilities, they can turn into gauntlets. With nearly 200 million people globally experiencing a severe disability, stairs, curbs, train gaps, even crosswalks can be impassable obstacles. But as devices grow smarter, cities are becoming more accessible. 
In fact, the assistive tech industry will be worth an estimated $30 billion by 2024. That's up from $14 billion in 2015. And when those with disabilities are around 40% less likely to be employed, access, of course, has a huge impact on the economy as well. It's, it's very important to invest in our field because there's a multiplicator effect. If we develop new technologies, it does not help just single persons. It helps a large group of, of users. Three of the most cutting-edge examples are already changing lives. My accident was in Dijon with a motorcycle. In the first second, you, you know what happens. Jose, he wrote us about uh, half a year ago an email that he would like to test the wheelchair. Our goal is to develop a wheelchair that can climb stairs. Cool. <laughs> so genial. Thank you. Again. Hey, super. Hast du das super gemacht? Funktioniert? Ja. Nein, ist wirklich ein ja, fast Tränenfall. Wirklich super. Ja. Merci vielmals. The goal was to make a, a, really, a really cool robot at the start. But then it switched over to, to developing this product because we saw there was such a huge need for, for the people. That need is felt in cities across the world. In Paris, the European Union's largest city, only nine out of more than 300 metro stations have full disabled access as of 2019. I think there's a boom in the development of assistive technologies. Systems are getting more robust and smaller and smaller. These smaller systems are allowing assistive tech to become increasingly wearable. By 2025, there'll be an estimated 25 billion connections between these things around the world. This will transform how devices operate within cities. Unfortunately, I cannot name a single city as a perfectly disabled friendly city. That's why we are trying to provide this independency for visually impaired people. We walk is a smart cane developed for visually impaired people. Uh, you can easily connect WeWalk to your smartphone via WeWalk's application. And it's so enjoyable, uh, you know, you can talk with your cane and your cane is answering you. Navigation, I get it, Star. Navigation. Shift the club. Star. Star. Another of WeWalk's capabilities is obstacle detection. Embedded in the handle is an ultrasonic sensor that maps the user's surroundings. If an obstacle is detected, the stick warns the user by vibration. Daha önce aslında ben WeWalk'un bir çağ kapanırken yeni bir çağ başlıyor olarak. All of these technologies have had interest from other industries, indicating that the good health of the assistive tech sector can only be a good thing for society. There is a lot of new movement and there will be a lot of new results. We apply cool technology, robotic technology, which attracts many people who do not have a relationship to any kind of uh, person with a disability. So it opens the minds of many people. If you've ever wondered why someone would pay to be terrified by creepy clowns at a haunted house, at least this one comes with a car wash. It's a haunted car wash in Brunswick, Ohio. For $20, you get a trick-or-treat bag, sheer terror, and an air freshener to help afterward. And even though the little kids may never be the same if you drive through a tunnel, at least the outside of your car will be clean. A little clowning around when the water comes down along with the wax you fear. The attacks of the workers who are lurkers and make up and masks bringing fears and tears and jeers as drivers pass. It's where car care looks like car scare. Making you wince with the rinse, leave tread with your dread and never want to steer back through the ghostly scene thinking your scarred car is better left unclean. I'm Carl Azus for CNN.